And hello, welcome to Solo Playthroughs. We we got a good one today. Uh, this might be the least confident I have felt going into a live playthrough other than probably when I tried to do Family Robinson live uh, however many months ago that was. So uh, we got our work cut out for us today. I am, uh, I've learned a lot about this spirit and uh, I feel pretty confident with my uh, my game plan, which I've been able to develop over the last few uh, practice runs that I did yesterday and today, but uh, it's tough. It's gonna be a pretty tough challenge. France messes with Starlight more than I expected, uh, but I think uh, we'll still have a chance. Hey, what's up, Thomas? How are you, man? Um, so look, as you can may be able to tell, this is like a bit of, you know, solo playthroughs, mea culpa tour, uh, looked at, hey, what's up, Otis? How are you, man? Um, the uh if you looked at my top 10 true solo spirits i uh was pretty i was <laughs> i was i got some slack for undervaluing four spirits in particular and the four spirits that i was told i undervalued were downpour keeper river uh and now here we are with starlight so and uh yeah the comments unsurprisingly were right uh this was definitely a spirit i needed to get some more games under my belt with and I've been pretty happy to see just how powerful it can be uh, in some co-op games that I play with with a friend or two and you know I developed a different strategy I started going for the two damage at range zero thing pretty quick and that has been really helpful I found that not effective against France for reasons I might I hopefully will get into as we develop and we'll see kind of what opening I'm going to do here today uh, so I've yammered enough I think uh, if you're first time joining me here in solo playthroughs land for a live playthrough uh, my wife Mrs. Playthroughs <laughs> her name's Sarah not Mrs. Playthroughs that'd be weird uh, Sarah monitors the chat she is fantastic she's super nice please be nice to her I, I, we also are on a 25 second second delay so if anything you see happened 25 seconds in the past but please comments you see me make a mistake just let me know it usually works out uh, I do the delay it really helps make sure there's no lag issues uh, at least my uh, somewhat amateur understanding of this hey what's up Michael how are you yeah starlight's cool I can definitely see why people love this period so much for sure for sure oh yeah, Thomas, yeah, tr Tricksters. So, uh, again, I gotta get better at reading off the uh, the comments that I replied to. So Thomas wrote, he hasn't had the courage to give Starlight a go yet. I uh, just touched Trickster. Trickster is one of my favorites. So looking forward to this. And Michael wrote, Starlight's one of his favorites with a smiley face, which is super important. All right, let me get this off the board so we can start shuffling some decks here. I'm going to get the the board we're using. Oh, we're going to D. We're going, we're going to the weird one, folks. That is fine. Uh, again, board D is strange in a few different senses. Having this board one connected to so many things, uh, so many, that's unusual, right? Usually you have the coastal lands, they're separate from the rest. Uh, adjacency is a lot more common on board D. The other thing that's unusual is having the same land type represented twice on the coastal lands. Uh, so you are a little bit more, can be a swingier game depending on how the invader deck comes out. Oh, one thing I should say, I'm experimenting with a new lighting. So if anyone's like a lighting expert and like really likes the look of this, um, I have, instead of having a light behind me, it was creating some shadow issues. I put lights up in the corners as I continue to try to improve things around here. So let's, let's give this a try for a few videos and, and see what I can do from there. All right, we're gonna get the two Dahan in land one, the forest, the jungle Dahan in land two, the mountain Dahan in land five, and the two sands Dahan in land seven. Because of the special rules of France, and notice I use the England card just to block off the uh, tray. Again, we only have seven towns to work with. That's the rules in a, in a single board game. So you better, you have to place an eighth town and you don't have it. Guess what? Auto lose condition. And that definitely will come into play. Uh, and in no, in large part, again, because of uh, France's other special rules that we'll get into. So I have six on the card here, uh, putting one uh in land seven i'm putting one in land eight it is the highest numbered land without a, a pre-printed town setup icon and then we get to put one in land one as well so they're clustered up in that corner uh, additionally we have so there's four left on this card as we start the game right we're going to have a beast in the lowest numbered land that doesn't have a pre-printed setup icon that's number three on board uh d and we have a disease in land two and then the final thing i need to put on here is a city in land two as well sorry my my cord keeps getting caught hopefully that will stop happening all right i'm going to shuffle up the major power deck uh, 
my biggest issue with Starlight in my practice runs is finding the timing of getting that major power. It can be really tricky. Um, so we'll see how how we have we can uh, kind of make that work because you are gonna you don't need a major to win with Starlight, but you're it's gonna be really hard to do it without for sure. Uh, Eric B, what's up, man? Good to see you. I wrote excited for this playthrough. Starlight is guaranteed to be a brain burner. I know. Uh, I will try to keep brain burning <laughs> delays to a minimum, uh, but we will see how that goes. So, cool, cool. Shuffling up the minor powers. So again, I'm not going to go through, like we're not doing story time with Greg. We're not going to go through the starting powers. We're not going to go through the innate rules. All that was done on my first Starlight video, which was against the, was a level three playthrough against, I don't even remember, <laughs> against somebody. But if you go on the playlist on my channel, all my Spirit video, Island videos are in a Spirit Island playlist. Oh no, my shuffling is failing me. Uh, so you can go and, and you can see the Starlight one and uh, watch that, the beginning of that, if you want to uh, hear me run through all the starting powers and the unique powers and stuff like that. Cool. So minor powers are shuffled. We have the event deck. Do, do, do. Shuffle that. Uh, we're going to do one more thing with the event deck. Again, we are playing as France, so we'll take the special Slave Rebellion event card, and we're going to put that underneath the top three event cards. So it's the fourth card on the deck, and that goes right there. Keeping track of when that's coming up is really important in any strategy against France and making sure you use the Dahan to your advantage as much as you possibly can. Yo, it was Hasberg. Thanks, Otis. So I, I did uh, Starlight level three against Hasberg, and uh, I believe I won by the skin of my teeth, but uh, sounds that sounds about something I would do. All right, so you know those those I've had a, a number of very fortunate victories <laughs> of late, so I'm kind of due for a shellacking in Spirit Island. That is for sure. My timing and when I decide to film has just been very nice. All right, so here is the fear deck. The fear deck. We're going to have a four, five, four, four, five, and four. We have four underneath the Terra level three divider, five on top of that Terra level two divider, four on top of that. And then uh, I forgot to put my starting presence. So there's going to be a starting blight in land five. And because, again, thematically, where does Starlight come from? Well, it was a star that fell from the sky, hit the ground. Uh, so we have that damage done by Starlight. And then uh, I think it was Stone's Unyielding Devi Defiance came and saved her and made sure that sh he, sh her or he was able to develop into the spirit they always wanted to be. Uh, and uh, that's how this whole thing starts. Uh, I need to do my Blight card. So I have the 16 cards right there. I'm going to shuffle these up. Roll the D20. I got a 12, so 16, 15, 14, 13. I almost had a hard time counting backwards by one. That's <laughs> that's not a, that's not a good start for how this day is going to go. All right, four fear in the fear pool. And then we're going to get the six invader cards, the stage three invader cards. I'm rolling a die. I rolled a six. We're going to take that one out. We have the five stage two invader cards. So it's a really Envela, Envela, well, vanilla invader deck. It's just a standard take one out of each stage and uh, just stack them on top. So it's uh, it's nice. It makes the setup a lot easier. Cool. And then we just need to take the one out for stage one. I rolled a five, not helpful. That's a three. Vader deck is set. I think that's everything. All right, a couple things I do to make sure I do not forget all the escalators for France. Again, we have the explore token here. It's a little, it's in shadow underneath my computer a little bit here, but that's, uh, Again, when you explore, if there are not any uh, towns or cities in the land that you explore to, you add a second explorer. That's pretty brutal against uh, Starlight uh, in particular. Uh, if you have, uh, when you build, so there's two different things with build. Level two, if you build and you successfully build. So if you have a disease that prevents the build, this doesn't apply. But if you successfully build, if there is more than one explorer, you turn any explorer after the first one uh, into a town as part of the build action. That can be really rough. And then stage four, the one I will guarantee forget at least once, uh, is when you, if you build a city on the coast, you have to add a town to an adjacent land with the fewest cities. I'm sorry, fewest towns. Uh, I put a, this stone here as just one thing to try to visually remind me that that's happening. 
And the stage five escalator is actually not something that matters to me that much. Not how I play Starlight. I don't. I rarely build Starlight into a blight removal spirit. Uh, but you have even less incentive to try to do that against level five France. Why? Because that level five escalator is it's a slow recovery. So if I do remove a blight from the island, instead of putting it on the card, it actually goes on the adversary card uh, until you get three per player. So if I ever got three there, then I could put it back on the blighted island card. It's not a very efficient way to go in a true solo game. You just won't have that much time to be doing that many blight removal actions. So hopefully we just don't <laughs> We don't have to worry about removing blight. Cool. Yes. Yes. All right. Otis says, a stone is your friend who mostly functions on my bodyguard. Yeah. And Starlight needs friends, clearly. So I think that's it. Right? Right? All right. Sorry, that's already in my head. So what are, what are these out here for? I use these red uh, presence tokens to cover up things that I'm not going to have access to for this game. And I use the blue ones against a pick three spirit. I use the, the blue ones to track what I've done for my growth options. So that should help you keep track with me as you watch of what my growth options are going to be. And I will try to uh, take it slow enough <laughs> that I'm not making any mistakes here. Because Lord knows there are some opportunities to make mistakes. All right. Well, let's go. First turn, I am going to add a presence. And again, in my games not against France, I, I really try to like to get that two damage at range zero. That's been a new strategy for me with Starlight that I've really liked. I've had some success with. It's just not working with France for a couple of reasons. Um, so I'm actually going to get myself a power card. So I'm going to take that presence off. And that's going to go where it has to go at range zero. So I have to put it where I already have presence. I'm going to put that in land five. Now, do I want to have either the ability to reclaim half of my card rounded up, or do I want to have the ability to gain a power card and move a presence? Well, uh, I would like to have the ability to gain a power card and move a presence, range one. So I'm going to cover up that with red. So I'm not doing that one. Now I have two more growth options. I'm going to do, let me gain a power card. I'm going to gain a miter. And moons are everything. If you can get three moons almost every turn uh, that will be really help sidereal guidance is really especially important against france because the ability just to move gather a bunch of explorers away now of course you gather them too much in one land and then you have to build in that land well you could be setting yourself up for auto lose pretty quick uh, which is where i find the two damage at range zero comes in so my as i approach this board i will probably do this and then this as my next three growth options i might decide i need to get an element so i might do that at some point um but we'll see how this all goes i like getting these off because that extra energy generation is also really nice all right so what is my minor power i'm going to get well we have four options two of them have moons so that makes me happy and oh that could be helpful that could be really helpful all right so here are my four options we have desiccating winds it has a fire an air and a earth tag it has a slow power range one from a sacred site. The target land is either has to be a mountain or a sands. If target land has badlands, one damage, add a badlands. And remember, if target land is badlands, that one damage becomes two. And then you get another one to make a three. Badlands actually can be a very nice mechanic with Starlight, especially when you start doing two damage at range zero during growth. You can just knock out a city during growth, which is really sick. Um, but again, it doesn't have a moon, so it makes me a little bit nervous. Wheat for what is lost has a fire, has a water, has an animal tag. It is a slow power range one. Target land has to have blight, one fear per type of invader present. So again, max you can get is three fear. There's only three types of invaders. Push up to one uh, explorer or town per blight. Uh, sucking ooze. It is a uh, fast power range one. Target land can be a sands or a wetlands. Um, a two, two fear of invaders are present. Isolate target. Oh, I never did my initial explore. Bam. I was going to get there. All right. Initial explore. Now the thing where you add the extra, the second explorer doesn't count during, um, during setup. And that is a final part of setup. So let me do that real quick. So you have an explorer in land one and an explorer in land three. And already that wetlands comes in big when you have, bam, <laughs> like, look at that. You get two coastal lands that are both going to be a problem starting starting pretty quick all right so sucking news as i was talking so two fear of invaders are present isolate target land now that isolate can be nice it's a little bit gambly but if you can guess right and now we already know that wetlands are not going to come up so say i was going to try to prevent an explorer to that sands you know i could prevent two explorers from going in because i've isolated the target land so that could be a nice thing 
The battle card is cool, but unless you get it early and reclaim a lot, it's not great. Yeah, Otis uh, just said that about the battle card. I definitely agree with his take on that. Uh, Sucking Ooze is tempting. It has the moon that I want. It has an earth tag, which is going to get me closer to a defend five ability. Uh, the, again, the water doesn't do much for me because I'm not planning to remove any blight this game. Uh, sunset, because there's really no point, thanks to Escalator number five. Uh, sunset's fire flows across the land, has a sun, and it has a moon, it has a fire tag. Do you really like the fire tag for fire burns, water soothes? It also has a water tag. Again, not that helpful for me at this game. Uh, one presence, a, a target land has a slow power. Target land is one away from where you have a sacred site. Uh, does you can do generate one fear, do one damage, and I can pay another energy to deal one damage in an adjacent land. That's interesting, but the problem is that's going to cost. That's a two energy card, which for a minor power for this spirit, that could be a problemo. Oh man, yeah. I mean, which puts me back to desiccating winds, but doesn't have the moon that I really want. So we're kind of stuck. Don't really love this draw, to be honest with you. But ideally, I would have gotten some kind of defend card. Yo. Starlight. Yeah. Otis said the Starlight might not reclaim. I I don't reclaim early. I will pro we'll see how the game goes. I mean, I do like getting up to that later in a game. Uh, but I do other things where you can reclaim cards. Like you have a reclaim one as one of your early growth options, and you have a card in here that does some kind of funny things as well i mean sunsets i mean sunsets fire is interesting i don't love the idea of being broke which is like what i will be but i think that works i just won't use that extra energy probably but that requirement of a sacred site is also not ideal with this card uh, I can gather that builds. So the other thing here is, am I moving a presence? It doesn't seem like I am. But I really did not get... The one thing I don't like about Desc Desiccated Winds, the limitation of mountains or sands can often be problematic. And again, I've you know, I, if it was jungle, I'd be more likely to do it. So I, I can have myself a better way to kill that city. Um, sucking Ooze, I just don't think is going to... Do Fear Isolate. Oh man, that's not great. And it's only the two fear if invaders are present. I'll take Sunset's Fire. Um, the ability to pick off an explorer could be pretty big. And then we'll go to my third growth option. I'm going to take, uh, so I have the option to move a presence. I can move it zero or one. Um, if I'm playing Sunset's Fire flows across the land, then I shouldn't do this. Uh, I should leave it there so I keep the sacred site. And I think that's what I'm going to do. Don't love them building there because that's going to be a city. And that means they're going to have to put a town somewhere. That was a really bad card draw. All right, cool. I'm going to do my third growth option. So this was my second growth option. My third growth option is I'm going to gain an energy. Now we go to the presence phase. I'm going to get one energy because of my present my, my presence tracks, and then we're going to do my two card plays. What am I going to do? Do I want to do the reclaim? No, nah, we'll do boon of reimagining, and we'll do sunsets fire. That's one energy for each of those guys, and that's going to unlock the. Uh, power of sidereal guidance. Only thought oh, should be fine. Yeah, it should be fine. It's going to be a rough couple of turns, but I think we'll be okay. All right, at least hopefully get into a, a groove here as we go. All right, so uh, I have no fast powers. We're going to go to the uh, event card again. The first event card just flips over. Jagged Earth rules. We now do the the invader actions. Uh, the invaders are building in land one. They build a city, so that means they put a town in an adjacent land that doesn't have any towns because there's a town, one town here, one town here. Uh, so I'm going to put, there are no towns in land two, so I'm going to put it there. And then we're going to put a town in land three. Cool. Uh, explore step. Explore step is sands. Oh, of course it would have. If I did that isolate thing there, that would have worked, but that's fine. So we're getting one explorer in there. There's no towns or cities. We get a second explorer. And then we get one explorer in land seven. 
uh, invader cards advance now we do my slow powers so i'm going to do generate one fear and i'm going to do one damage and land four all right i'm going to do sidereal guidance i'm going to gather this explorer into a town uh, into a land one away from my presence so I, I have presence here so i can gather it into land two just kind of make two kind of a mess for a little bit that's fine and then i'm going to do the boon of reimagining target spirit may forget a power card i'm gonna forget the shape the self anew that is out and i'm going to draw six minor powers and i'm going to keep two of them so one two three four five six bam what do we get so we have pact of the joint hunt target spirit gathers dahan into one of its lands one damage in that land per dahan present slow power uh that's interesting really want <laughs> I really need a defend card. A defend five or a defense six would be absolutely glorious in land one right now. Uh, that's kind of what I'm hoping for. Uh, my other problem, piece of the next time scout. Oh, that's fine. We'll figure it out. So lore of the unknown, I can gather one explorer or town into a land that doesn't have invaders. So in theory, I could play get that and gather it here. That does have the moon and the um, and the fire tag that I like. So that that's an interesting idea because it will it's already start matching me with some elements. So that is intriguing. You have some advice. Oh, this is going nuts. I'm always sad when I come to see. Uh... <laughs> uh, Michael said that I'm not playing downpour. Uh, I'm always sad when I see it come. Oh, when I'm not right, 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 right. I know you're talking about the isolate card. Yeah, that isolate card is sick with downpour. Uh, you can push it to land. Yeah, Otis is talking about the miss card that could push cities, which is also pretty awesome. All right, gnawing root biters push up to two towns. Guardian serpents has a moon like that. Add a beast into one of target spirit's lands. If target spirit has a sacred site there, defend four. We have dire metamorphosis. Oh my gosh, this card! My friend Tony used this card on the game, and I just I always overlooked it, and I saw like the power of it, and it's really really sick. Um, it does have slow power, one fear, one damage, one damage to Dahan. Add a Badlands, add a Beast, add a Disease, add a Strife, add a Wild, add a Blight. It is so in it's a really interesting card. And then finally, shadows burn, shadows of the burning forest. Target land, you have to have presence there. If target land is a mountain or a jungle, you can push one explorer and one town. Also has the fire, which I really like. Really, really like. Um, we still have one more stage one card coming up. Diamond Metamorphosis is interesting. However, got the money for uh, what I have the money. Oh, those both cost zero too, which I really like two plants in a power card that way if i get a third plant i think i go with the two fires and that's just going to help define how where we're going with this so i'm going to gain both of those those four cards go away that's done bam time passes we're good oh but i don't have any defense Uh, I might I might want to get that defend. I might want to get that defend, even though I don't love it, but it has the moon. Then the question is, which of these do I not take? Uh... Yeah, I'm not going to shout. I'm going to take Guardian Serpents, and I'm not going to take Shadows of the Burning Forest. You know, Shadows really is a fear card, unless it's mountains or jungles, and while that could be helpful i think it's I, I do want to give myself a shot in land one here uh my other pro that's interesting all right i'm going to reset my growth options i'm going to add a presence i'm going to add a presence range zero so where does it have to go it has to go here now i'm going to cover up the three energy can i afford to do all this yes that will work all right so then i'm going to do this i'm going to gain another power card and move a presence i'm going to move this presence into land 
Oh man, <laughs> I'm running out of presents. I defend. I think if I just let that blight and I gather this out, gather it into there, it's fine. Yeah, I'm going to let three blight. I think that's where this is going to go. And then I'll play the reclaim card here. And then I'll have Peace of the Nighttime Sky for next turn. That'll work. All right, so I'm going to gain a power card. Uh, devouring ants. So, so none of ooh defense six. Hello. <laughs> well, that just got easier. Doesn't have the moon though, but I think I have to take that. It has the animal tag and an earth tag, which I like both of those. The other ones are devouring ants. Uh, one fear, one damage. Destroy one Dahan, and then if target is a jungle or a sands, do plus one damage. Uh, we have enticing splendor. Which is range zero, can't have blight, gather and explore a town. Whatever. I'm gonna take that defense six card. I think that's that's gonna be more important than anything else I could take here. Uh, so then I will move a presence here. And then I'm going to do I'm um, gonna one energy. Do I want to play three card plays? I could just do that next turn. And a beast, sacred site. I wouldn't have to play that if I'm defending six, and then I could do peace of the nighttime sky. Oh, but that cost me three money. <laughs> awesome. Uh, that shouldn't go there. This should be a growth option. So I moved the one presence there. Get rid of that. If I want an element, is really the question. If I play those two. If I don't unlock this, instead if I unlock uh, an element, that might make more sense here. So I'm going to cover this up again, and it was just the same thing. Again, because I, I could have done these growth options to any plant, so I just added the presence first. I still had two presents there. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and then I'll make the element I get a moon. And then my third growth option, I'm going to get myself an energy. All right, that'll work. So let's review. So my three growth options that I did, oh, I did, I keep doing the wrong things. Um, reds are for covering, blues are for growth. So what I did was I... Uh, gained the power card. Then when I saw my power cards, then I decided what my growth option was. My growth option, so I, I added the presence here. Um, so I gained a power card and I moved the presence. There were two presents there, I moved it there. Then I added another presence there. And then my third growth option is I got an energy. Dire fast. The last comment. Let's all we'll make sure he never forgets the triangle trade. Was that important? Oh. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so I'm only going to play two cards. I was thinking about doing three card plays, but my energy, my energy production isn't going to justify that. Um, so then I get a third, I get another energy for my presence track. I'm going to pay for peace at the other time sky. And um, what do I have? I have three moons because I added the moon element here. And that will work. And... I, I wish I took that other card that had the moon and the, the fire now that I ended up with this defend six. But the fan cards are like watered down more with Jagged Earth, which I kind of like. Uh, but you really have to go digging for them sometimes. Uh, and then we're going to I do that. So I'm going to get to the, the fire at range two slower than I want. But I think that'll be fine. Um, oh, wait. I'm not doing this. I'm doing the defense six. And I'm not doing peace of the nighttime sky. What am I doing? I'm doing lore of the unknown. Right. Nature's Resilience, Lore of the Unknown, uh, and I only have two moons because that one moon there, which is fine. I would rather that. Gain a spirit. Choose a spirit. Yeah, I don't want to make. I don't want to make that a plant tag. That's not going to work. All right, cool. Uh, so we're going to do a defense six in land one, 
and then that's with nature's resilience we're doing lore of the unknown we're gathering it i'm going to gather this town from land three i'm going to gather it into land two land two is going to be a mess it just is what it is do i really want to move that presence there then probably not i will move this presence to land uh, i can only move it one let me get a i'll get presence down to land four let me get something closer to land three so as part of growth, instead of moving into land two, I just moved it into land, uh, moved that presence into land four. All right, so everything's set. We're gonna go to the event card. What do we have? Bureaucracies adjust funding on each board with, so basically the big question with the bureaucracies, bureau, sorry, bureaucrats adjust funding is, is there more than nine or less than three structures? There is not, so we can just ignore that. Uh, two fear per board with two or more beasts, not mine. And with Vader's Ravage, if, the land has both Dahan and Presence Defend 5. None of that applies. Uh, ravaging. I've defended 6. The invaders are ravaging 6. The Dahan are going to fight back. I'm going to... Where are they building? They're just building a city there, and it's fine. I'm wondering if I should knock this town off, but I can I can do that later. Oh, right. Right. Thank you. I knew that. That, had to go into, that went into land. Oh, that would build in land 4 then uh do i want to do that that's a good question Beast. yeah i still think that makes sense it's going to build a city but i'm fine with that it prevents the blight in land three and with coastal lands that could be a super big problem all right, yeah, cool. Thank you. Hey, the target Lord Ender has a target of land that doesn't have invaders. Um, what are we doing now? So I'm adding, uh, I'm going to destroy this city and this explorer. That's two fear. Uh, ravaging in land one, we're good. We're, or sorry, land three, we're good. We're building. We're going to build a city in land seven. We're going to build a city in land four. So definitely more cities than is ideal. But with that defense six card, that we, we should be able to make that work. Um, that presence is probably not where I should have put that. <laughs> I'm actually gonna put this back in two because of um, if I remember, Lord of the Unknown couldn't target there. Uh, it doesn't make sense to have this presence there, just be like a sitting duck. So we'll put that in two. Um, I might reclaim this defense six next turn, and I could defend six and land seven and just let a blight go into four, which is better than having a blight in three. All right, so we did the build step. We're doing the explorer step. Where are we exploring? We're exploring into mountains. So we're going to get two explorers into land four, land five, and then one explorer into land eight. Invader cards advance. I'm going to do sidereal guidance. We're gathering this explorer into land one. Yeah, that will make some sense. I have no other slow powers, so time passes. Now, how am I on money? All right, I will be able to pay for these three cards, and I do a piece. Oh, I can do piece of the nighttime sky. That's probably better instead of reclaiming. Yeah, that's good. So I'm going to. Um, Put a presence at now. Well, do I want to do that yet? Am I doing something else? I want to move a presence, so I want an element. F four. I don't think where I want to move this presence. I can actually def the present both ravages in seven and four, and I actually might forget piece of the nighttime sky altogether, um, which is uh, which is totally a strategy. But that does mean guardian serpent is kind of pointless for me right now. So again, wishing I did not take that card and took what I originally wanted to take. So let me get another power card here. Try to get something that's a little bit more useful than Guardian Serpents. Uh, so we have Here There Be Monsters, Purifying Flame. And the Purifying Flame has a fire, which I like. One damage per Blight. Target land is a Mountain or Sand domain instead of remove a Blight. So that's a little rough. Uh, Here There Be Monsters, uh, you may push an Explorer, Town, or Dahan to uh, two fear. If the target land has beast, one more fear. Promise of protection. Gather up to two Dahan. Dahan have plus two health while in target land. That could be nice. 
It has the earth tag too, which I like. Oh, if I so I defended five there actually. I played guardian serpents. I can add a beast. I can add another beast on the board. I might actually do that. And then confounding mist, defend four, each invader. Add it to the target land this turn, maybe immediately push another land. I'm going to take Promises of Protection. It has the Earth and any animal tag. Um, yeah, none of those cities have an Earth. And I like being able to gather up some Dahan. Again, that could be really useful when we're playing against France, especially when we're going to know that's a thing for next turn. So I don't actually need to. Yeah, I'll play Promises of. Oh, I have two more growth options. Right. I'm going to move a presence. Where do I want to move a presence? I want to move a presence. Here. I'm going to play uh, my second growth option of adding a presence. I'm going to add a presence from here. I give myself a sacred site there. And then I'm going to use that. I get to have plus one card play this turn, and I can move a presence too. I do not want to do that. What cards am I going to play? Well, I'm going to get one energy from the presence track, and I'm going to play. Oh, I need to reclaim. Nah, I can. This is covered up. I don't really have to rec. I could do gather the scattered light of stars next turn. That should work out pretty well. All right, so I'm going to play these two cards, these three cards, right? I get an extra card play from there. Great. So I add a beast and one of uh, Target Spirit's lands. Since I have... No, actually, I'm not even going to play Pieces of the Nighttime Sky. No point. I'm going to play Gather to Scatter Light of Stars instead. And here's why. So I'm going to be defending four in land four. I'm defending... Uh, I have one, two, oh, I didn't get an earth. Ah! I could use that next turn. Yeah, I, I did it again. I'm going to actually get the element off of here. And I'm going to get myself an earth. So many things to factor in. <laughs> with this stupid spirit man all right so again i once again changed up my presence uh i keep trying to get this off and i keep like realizing i need the elements instead so we're going to do that um and now i have two earth i have a third earth which is going to give me the ability to defend five and land seven which is the whole point because of air moves earth and doors so again what what have i unlocked as far as my um, I have Sidereal Guidance level 1, and then I have Defend 5 uh, with Air Moves, Earth, and Doors. Where, where am I Dahan going to be? If I didn't do this, I did... Uh, so I'm going to actually get another energy, because I actually didn't get that extra card play. So that was my third growth option was that that energy so let me review this whole turn so i gained the power card i moved the presence oh then i couldn't get a sacred site there ah oh, shoot so i'm not defending four because i do not have a sacred site uh... And then I won't get the defend five. Then I won't get the defend five. Let me review all this. We're back to square one, kids. So I already gained the presence and I moved the presence and then I try to move it there. I did. I'm one earth away. I'm doing what I want to do. I'm going to let land four blight because it just doesn't make any sense not to. So I'm going to keep that presence there. I'm going to move it somewhere else. I'll move it into land three just so I get some presence down there. 
I am going to add a presence and I'm going to add a presence from, I'm going to try to get this two damage thing opened. I'm just not even going to worry about, oh, can I get a sacred site in seven? That might be interesting. I might, I'll need to get a little lucky. Sacred site. I have a sacred site there. Then I'm, so this beast will not be here. I'll try to get a sacred site in seven. Let me do that. So I move that. Oh, then I have to I have to do another move thing. Oh man, none of this is adding up. Gross. I think we go back to my original shutter program. So look, I am just going to play piece it on nighttime sky. This is from the presence track, right? So I started with one money. Right, I had one energy going into this turn. I think someone tell me that. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I spent three. Yeah, I had one energy going into this turn. Makes sense. Uh, we did that. Do I want to move that anywhere? No. I'll move this into three because I can. Now I'm going to play Piece of the Nighttime Sky. There we go. And then I'm going to play. Uh, I'm going to add a presence, make myself a sacred site, and land three. I get one energy because I uncovered that. I know I'm getting another energy from the presence track, so I might as well just take that here. But that means next turn I'll be able to do two damage at range zero, which can be really huge. Yeah. Defending lands. Lord, you know, can't defy it. You see the last comment? You can defend them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can make them not ravage in both seven and four. I couldn't. The problem is I can't defend in land four unless I have a sacred site. And then I realized that. Um, and I, I basically gave myself four growth options. So that was that was kind of the screw up. Then that's kind of the what I'm stuck doing now. But why not move from two to four? No, because I where I started this turn was there. So you're saying. I move the presence, I add a presence. I make that an earth. This is the one I had. I wouldn't take this. Let me do that. I just think the math gets bad. I move, I gain a power card, add a presence, but then I won't have the three power cards. Well, maybe I don't need the three power cards, is what you're saying. Oh, I do that. And then my third growth option is what? I get the energy? Is that what I originally was trying to do and I got screwed up? Cool. I think that was my original plan. I don't know. <laughs> sure, why not? So we're going to add a beast into land uh four then and we'll defend four in land four all right that's fine and then we have the three earth so we're defending five in land i have to pay for this we're defending five in land seven and uh are you thinking of the innate is range zero what innate this innate no i'm not yeah, I definitely wasn't. I think I, I just got tripped up and thought I was... Um, I got messed up because I was trying to do the third card play. Uh, and then that was not working. But I can... These two cards having for next turn wouldn't be terrible, especially if I can find a way to use the Slave Rebellion card to my benefit two turns from now. All right. So I have two moons that do nothing for me. Um, so we're going to play... So I did this with the Fen 4. Do I want to gather up another Dahan? Sure, I'm going to gather up one Dahan. Dahan have four health, um, but that's fine. They'll be enough to wipe out everything in land seven. We're now going to go to the event card. What have we got? War touches the island shores. Wow, not awful. <laughs> not awful. Uh, invaders from a different faraway land assault the ones here. Torching farms, bombarding cities, you may. I'm definitely allowing the attacks, so we're going to discard the top major power. Oh, good one. Six damage. So that's going to destroy 
uh, the city, the town, and the explorer in land one. That gives me three fear, so one. There's going to be a remainder of two. That does one blight to land two. Uh, the Dahan, we're kind of sitting that one out, so we're totally good. Uh, beasts find new homes on each board. Push one beast to an adjacent land without blight. One fear if invaders are there. Sure, I'm going to push this beast to land five. There's one fear because there is an invader in land five. Oh, there's blight there. Shoot. Uh, never mind. I'll push this beast. I'll stack up some beasts in land four. That could be helpful. And then I'll get one fear because there's invaders in land four. There is no blight in land four, so I can. Each player may push one Dahan to an adjacent land, doing one damage there. I will push a Dahan from land two into land five. It does one damage there. Uh, so reclaim territory. So yeah, it's you don't even have to push it to an adjacent land that has a pre-printed setup. So you're reclaiming territory. So thematically, I'm surprised that's not a restriction on that card, but it is what it is. So one damage there, I knocked out the Explorer in land five. So really nice fear card or event card for us there. Uh, mimic the Dahan. Each player removes one Explorer or town from a land with two or more Dahan. I will remove, well, I'm gonna, I want to use a Slave Rebellion card because it's going to give me the chance to get another Dahan on the board before the Invaders Axe next turn. Plus, if the Explore card is, if it's a coastal land, I'd rather have a town there, so it only put one Explorer instead of two, since I know I'm going to destroy that dude anyway. So I'm going to remove the Explorer from land one. All right, Ravaging. I'm Ravaging in land four. It's Ravaging five. I'm defended four. So we're good. Ravaging land seven. It's Ravaging six. I'm defended five. And actually, the Han's not even injured because they have plus two health thanks to Promises of Protection. Uh, tsunami goes away. Uh, the Dahan retaliates six. The town, the city, and the explorer are dead. That's three fear. So one down. Remainder of two. Fear card. Uh, the build step, the... Invaders are going to build in land eight. Nothing left to build in land five because that, that event card was awesome. And now we're exploring. Where are we exploring? Exploring into jungles. So I don't have a town at either. So the escalation is weird with France is that basically I have to choose which of the land, these lands I want to put a town in. And I would like to put a town in... This defendability was done. I'd like to put a town in. Uh, doesn't. I have so many Dahan here. I think it'll be easier to. This not going to build there next turn anyway, unless the, the event card says we ignore the explore card, which would be rough. Um, so what I will do is I will put a town in land six. This defendability can come off. And just put another city on the board there. I'd rather keep two empty and have a city and six than, uh, than the other way around. All right. Um, Sidereal Guidance. I am going to gather. Well, Invader cards advance. And I get to gather an up, to, gather, uh, uh, up to one Explorer or one Dahan. I will gather. Well, this is That's a nice combo. Yeah, Promises of Protection is a nice combo with Air Moves, Earth, and Doors. So that should work well. And then I'm going to gather this explorer out of here so it doesn't build an extra town. We're ravaging in mountains, so I'll put that in land five and hope there's no nothing that augments the uh, explorer's um, ravaging next turn. Cool. Time passes. All right. Let's uh, not screw up growth for once, Greg. Let's <laughs> see if we can't get this done uh, the, the uh, normal way. That we're still in tower level one. I can deal with that. I'm not getting to that that two damage at, at range zero, which is definitely a strategy I really like. It's just a nice way to pick off two explorers. Uh, really easy. Um, I, and I guess I'm here. I guess this isn't going to help that much because I'm already here. I can just get myself three card plays instead of having to worry about the plus one card play a turn. So that's uh, that's a thing. That's definitely a thing. So I will a uh, piece of the nighttime sky. I'm going to need to be have a sacred site adjacent to that sucker. So let me do that. So I'm going to get a power card with this growth option. Um, it's probably not worth getting a major yet. 
Yeah, probably not. All right, we're going to get... Uh, so we have call to trade. We have right... Oh, right of land rejection. So nice. Target land has to have Dahan, but it also pushes at the three Dahan. Uh, that's a really interesting one. All right, so it has a moon, it has a fire, it has an earth. All those elements I love. Call to trade doesn't have that. Birch card warning pre prevents two Dahan from being destroyed. Renewing boon is not great for a solo game. Um, I th think right of land rejection is that fire element is going to go really nice with what else I have here. Uh, so we're going to take that. We're going to move a presence. I'm going to move a presence into land seven. I can push. Oh, I can't. Oh, if I can get another earth, I could defend five and actually push those suckers in there, which would be really nice. But that's not going to work. Uh, but I can prevent building. No, I don't have a Dahan anywhere. If I see if I could prevent the building this turn, which I can't, which is fine. Um, so now I'm going to add a presence. I'm going to... I want to play all three of those. There's really no point. Do I reclaim one? That's interesting. I take, if I do their reclaim one option, I do the defense six, I push the Dahan in there. I wipe out everything there. Yeah, I'm going to reclaim one and get nature's resilience. And then I'm going to add a presence and give myself three card plays. I'm going to get one energy from the presence track. I'm going to add this presence and land seven. This is nuts. That's not going to build. This might build a city, but I'm fine with that. So I'm going to play right of land rejections, nature, nature's resilience. And I'm going to play, um, I've literally never used Peace of the Nighttime Sky, which is bananas. I'm going to play Gather the Sacred Light of Stars. All right. Um, now I'm going to pay for these two. What are my elements? I have three moons, which is great. And I have three earth, which is great. Uh, yes. Right. Cool. Thanks, Otis. Um, the Otis just said, reminded me that I could reclaim one card, which is something I don't love to do uh, with Starlight, but uh, I was glad I was able to see it. Uh, and this one, uh, this is definitely a weird build for, <laughs> for me, but it's Starlight. What do we expect? So I'm defending six in land eight. And we are def going to uh, push three Dahan with right of land rejection. And we're going to push these three Dahan into land eight. I just totally wipe out this side of the board and then start to try to move this back. So having three Dahan up there in No Man's Land isn't great, great, but I think we'll be able to make this work. Hopefully we get a card that use, makes use of these beasts, uh, and we'll go from there. And, um, oh, I don't even need to defend five. Do I have another card with Earth? I don't reclaim... Yeah, I'm going to do a defend five here instead, and I'm not going to take nature's resilience. I'm going to try to get another card and maybe one that doesn't cost anything. Uh, that will work. But oh, Lordy Unknown doesn't have a, a an earth tag. So I'm basically looking at guardian serpents which would allow me to add another beast on the board. I don't hate that. Not hate that at all. All right, we're gonna play Guardian Serpents. It costs one, it gives me the earth I need, and that's fine. Uh, and then I get to add another beast on the board and just hope we can get something to make use of those suckers. So I'll add this beast in land six. And we'll see, we have a fear card. We're gonna have two event cards. 
I mean, one event card, but two event cards. And yeah, I still have the three moons, so that's totally right. All right, what are we doing? Uh, so I'm defending five instead of defending six. I switched out those cards. The event card, Slave Rebellion. So cool. We get to add a Strife to a land, any land we want. Um, we have to add it to a town, though. After we finish this, we do another event card, and this gets put back underneath, right? So I'll set that up. But uh, aid the uprising is the the, the the Dahan event at the bottom. Invaders with strife take one damage per Dahan present. So this dude is the strife goes away. That's dead. That's a fear. And then we add a Dahan, one Dahan for each uh, building that is destroyed. That's great. And this will go back on top of the deck. Three cards on top because you set it just like it is, um, just like setup. Now we have the second event card, Healthy Island. Search in each land with at least two explorers. Push one explorer onto the adjacent land without invaders. I mean, don't hate that. Uh, so there's only one land with two explorers. I'll push this into land one because the only land without invaders nearby. Push one beast to an adjacent land with no blight. It deals one damage there. I think there's a comment, but a correction. After you defend decision. Yeah, right. <laughs> Um, right, but then you got a second card. So I still Otis. Otis is like, yeah, you get plus one damage <laughs> uh, with the event card, and uh, that, that's always a risk. Um, you know, I think at higher levels, especially, I go a little more aggressive. But yeah, that's definitely a risk. Uh, so that's fine. Do I might. So I get to. I get to push it to a place with no blight. I could do one damage there. I wish it was one damage per. Oh, county defense. I'm actually defending another three. I'm actually defending eight up here. So I'm just going to make this a six because of county defense. Uh, during Ravage and Every Land, defend one per Dahan. A beast has to be added to a land with your sacred site with Guardian Serpents. Yeah, I did that. I'm not playing Guardian Serpents. This oh, wait. Uh, so good call. Thank you. No, yeah, I added the beast. Oh, it has to be a presence. Right. Uh, so I will add a third beast. Right, right. I'll add a third beast. I'll add this beast to uh, five. Right. Um, you have to add a beast to, it doesn't have to be a sacred site. So Michael pointed out the beast has to be added to a land with your sacred site with Guardian Serpents. It doesn't have to be a sacred site. It has to be presence though. If you have presence, if you have a sacred site, then you get to defend four. So I put that in six. That was wrong. I should have put that in five. Um, but, oh, I'm also defending one, defending one here. So that the will be injured or whatever that's worth. I will push this dude into land. It has to be a land without blight. I'll push this into land one and we'll just wipe out that. Ex Man, I'm just wiping out the explorers <laughs> and all the land. All my Dahan are up there. Let me go down. I'm going to push a beast into land three or even better. I'll push a beast into land six. There's no blight there. I'll just wipe out that explorer and that's fine. All right. Uh, fear card. What do we get? Uh, each player moves. Oh. <laughs> Um, I'm sorry for the how disturbing that sound was. <laughs> Too many monsters. Tower level one. Each player moves an explorer or a town from a land with a beast. Bye bye town. Uh, no fear generated. We just remove. We don't destroy it. Uh, and now we do the invader steps. That was really sick. So what are we doing? Uh, invaders are ravaging in land five. They're ravaging one. I'm defended one. That explorer is dead because of the Han fight back. They're ravaging six. I'm defended uh, eight. In land eight, uh, the hunt fight back, wipe out these guys. So that's three fear, remainder of two. Still on terror level one here. This is so sick. Um, I feel like I've defeated more cities than I like do an entire game sometimes, and I'm still in, in uh, terror level one. Uh, this can go off. Cool. And uh, so rabbit step is done. Build step, nothing to build in six, taking the disease off of two. And now we go to, oh wait, I have another fear card. No, that was during a rabbit step, right, right. Uh, now we're doing the explore step. I get one explorer into land four and I get two explorers into land seven. Now I have the option. I can put either put a blight in four or I can put a town in seven. I will put a town in seven. That is the level two escalation. So very fortunate event card, a fear card and event card combo. Now, gather the scattered light of stars at the end of this turn. After discarding, reclaim up to two uh, cards to your hand. You may then forget a unique power card. Uh, reclaim up to three additional cards. Great. So I'm going to put this all in my discard. Oh, wait. I have sidereal guidance. I get to gather, and I have the extra, the higher effect. I get to gather up to two explorers, or three explorers, 
I will gather these two explorers out of seven because again I have the three moons I have the two well actually I had four moons uh, and I'm going to gather both of these suckers into land five there's a beast there there's a the Han there there's a bunch going on I mean there is you know blight there too which isn't great but it will work all right so now all my soul powers are done after discarding I can reclaim two cards I'm going to reclaim gathered the scattered light of stars and boon of reimagining the seven have a source for explorers oh it did not huh good call those explorers are gone I would still add a town there, though. Um, but that means I can gather three explorers from another. <sighs> I'm so... That's so crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eric B. So Chase Phillips says the seven of a source of explorers. It did not, which is really weird. This shows how weird this game is right now. And Eric B. is like, don't think there's any towns adjacent to seven. Absolutely correct on all points. Now, the town still gets added because of the escalation, right? Because that's a separate thing altogether. Um, but yeah, so I basically just wasted sidereal guidance. So I got two explorers on the board that I moved from seven to five, and I can basically gather an explorer out of. I'm going to gather this explorer out of three and just put it into two. I mean, because I know that jungle is not going to come up because jungle is already up, and it's still. I mean, it could be a coastal land card, but that's a whole other uh, issue I'll have to deal with. So the real question is, do I take? I have so many power cards. <laughs> this is bananas. Yo! Something about a town. Uh, don't think there's any towns adjacent. It, no, are you missing? It, yeah, it, Otis. It, oh, you're not reading the last one. It, Otis said it a town. Okay. And then he said, oh, I'm reading it. Okay. No, yeah, it, that town was placed as part of the escalation. Um, so that was, and that happens after the explore step. Cool. I'm going to, I think I do need to reclaim, gather the scattered light of stars just for kicks uh and i'm going to gain claim boon of reimagining now i'm going to forget a unique power card i'm going to forget boon of reimagining it's really nuts that i've never used pieces of the nighttime sky oh they're ravaging oh i can't i can't gather that there <laughs> that would be stupid uh because it's, it would be ravaging two which is really bad so i'll gather this into four uh then it's i'm just not going to do sidereal all right i'm going to gather this explorer from five from one into five <laughs> final answer um cool uh so i gathered these two uh, wait, i gathered boon of Reima I, I reclaimed at the end of my turn because it gathered the scattered light of stars yo Sorry. why not forget yeah no i'm gonna forget boon of uh boon of reimagining for sure i'm gonna i'm gonna reclaim i'm gonna reclaim five cards total um I mean, I'm, I'm questioning whether i if one of the cards i if i should really reclaim gather the scattered light of stars but I think I might need that again before I get to this Reclaim 2. I do think I'm going to be going for this ability here. I don't need the Defend cards this turn, which is really nuts. I'm going to need them next turn. So the question is, what the heck do I want to do this turn? So I'm going to forget Boon of Reimagining, and I get to Reclaim three more cards as per the terms of Gather the Scattered Light of Stars. All right, I'm going to reset my growth options here too. And my money situation isn't great. I still only have one energy, which uh, eventually is going to come back and get me. Ooh. I think I do Lord of the Unknown to get this sucker out of there. I don't have a ton of damage cards, which is problem but i think i ooh, but i can get the three fires oh that would be that would be good and i have three card plays all right let me get three fires then oh and right over lunch rejection i could prevent a build well that's something then how about this instead of gathering so it's i can choose to act like i only had two moons last turn and knowing i have right of land rejection I can move my I can I can put myself in a situation where I'm moving into Han and I could just act like I had two moons. So I'm doing the lower effect of sidereal guidance and I get to gather up to one explorer or to Han. I would like to prevent building 
anything else in land four. So I'm just going to gather this one Dahan in there. And now I can play right of land rejection there, which will make a ton of sense. All right, so I'm going to reclaim these three cards. I might want a fourth though, because I feel like I'm going to need... I'm going to need to get my defend cards next turn. <laughs> yes, I am. I mean, this two damage at range zero just might never be needed because I have all these defend cards. So I could just go to four card plays, and then am I just trying to do this? Am I trying to do minor powers this whole time? Oh, three energy is also tempting. That would cost two. All right, ravaging, gather that. Yeah, I'm gonna need to try to get these Dahan down too. They're way too high. Source, all right. So I'm gonna play All right, I have to do this. Let me do this in order. So I'm going to add a presence. I'm going to add this presence here, and I'm going to give myself, I'm going to cover up the three energy. I'm going to give myself the ability to do an extra card play. So I'm adding this presence here, making a sacred site in land five. Again, it's range zero. I don't see any reason why I need presence in any of the coastal lands, and sacred sites are just everything. Oh, the, oh it's awesome. I also have pieces. I don't even know if I need those defend cards. I have pieces of the nighttime sky. And if there's going to be nothing there, the only thing I'm defending is it. Oh, it might not be. Oh, it's not going to be Terra level one anymore. <laughs> That's right. It's not going to be Terra level one anymore, kids. That's fine. It'll be fodder when I finally get a major. I'm going to do these three cards, or I can actually do. I can gain five cards back again with Gather the the, the, the Light of Stars. Yeah, that makes sense. So I'm going to get a, a fourth card play. I get to move another presence. Let me do this. I'm going to actually, yeah, so I'm going to move this presence to, I'm going to move it from seven into two. Um, going out of order. Let me do my growth first before I put the cards out of the board, just so I don't confuse anybody. And we're going to do this and get one energy. I get one energy from the presence track. I'm going to play these three cards, and I have a fourth card play because of the other growth option I unlocked. And I'm going to play Gather to Scatter Light of Stars again. So it's a little bit of like a reclaim loop right now, um, but I think this will work pretty well. Question is, can I realistically get a Terra level two victory? There's the other beast. We got some options. All right, if I can get an event card that gives me some damage with that beast, I mean, the beast already allowed me to remove that guy, so I can't really complain too much. All right, so what are we doing? I'm going to do Invaders Do Not Build in land four. And I'm going to get one fear because it's either uh, fear for the number of structures or fear for the number of Dahan, whichever is less. There's only one Dahan there, so that's one fear. I'm going to gather an explorer or a town into a land without uh, invaders. So I'm going to gather the Lord of the Unknown into land five. And... The rest of my powers are slow. Now, what are my powers, though? I do with my elements. I have a one, two, three, fire, and I have one, two, three, four, five, five uh, moon. It seems like overkill. And I have nothing else that amounts to anything. I have one earth, two earth. I have one air, one plant, one water. Uh, but that will work. All right. Cool. So if I get the three fire things every turn, I, I won't even need the, you know, that it's another way to, to deal with uh, not having the, the two damage at range zero. Cool. So that is my uh, spirit phase is done. We now go to the uh, invader phase. Cultural assimilation on each board in a land with exactly one Dahan that has or is adjacent to a city. Replace that to Han. So it's Terra Level 1. Replace that to Han with a town. That's rough. I just put that sucker in there. But the nice thing is the effect of Right of Land's Rejection, that's in place for the entire turn. So moving that to Han in there was still helpful uh, because I was able to prevent further building. But it's almost like it built anyway because now we have this town. 
right? But now it prevented a city from building because that would have been even double bad. Each beast deals two damage. Remove any token that destroys a city or town. That's cool. So that destroys that. Ask and you shall receive. And then we have this beast here. I wish I... Well, I guess that... I can't complain I moved that over there next last turn. So this is going to kill that. Uh, each beast does two damage. I want to... So this beast gets removed because it destroyed a town. I'm actually going to do this a little unusual. I'm going to only do... One damage to this town, this city, and one damage to a town. I'm going to do more damage there later, but I want to save that beast on the board. All right, Reckless Offensive. Then each board, choose a land with at least two Dahan, at least two cities or towns. It does not apply, so we can ignore that. All right, two Fear Cards. Terror level two. Uh, each city or town does minus one damage. Invaders do not heal damage at the end of this turn. That's pretty sick. I'll leave that out so I remember that. And then we have a uh, second fear card. Defend two in all lands with uh, presence. Each spirit gains one energy per sacred site they have and lands with invaders. So I just get one energy from that, but that's actually really big uh, based on I am very energy poor right now in the way I have built Starlight. Mrs. Starlight. All right, Ravaging. This is Ravaging 1. We're good. Uh, we are now uh, building, not building here, nothing to build there. We are exploring coastal lands. Great. So we don't have to worry about the escalation, but we are getting th two explorers in land one, two explorers in land two, two explorers in land three. So they all had one each. So now we have nine explorers, which would be a total of math majors. That would be nine towns building next turn, <laughs> unless I do something about that. So we probably should uh, get on that. So these are going to move. Great. Um... That changes some things. Invaders not heal. I'm going to do sidereal guidance to move these three out of there into land five. All right, so that that needs to be done. Now, well, I do have right. I will have right lands rejection back, so maybe. I can only make them not build in a land with the Han. I wouldn't generate any fear, but that might be the better. Leave that there because there's the Han there. So I'll move these suckers out of two into five with sidereal guidance. I'm going to place Sunset's Fire Flows across the land. I'm going to generate one fear. I'm going to do one damage. And then I'm going to pay an energy. I'm going to do two more damage here. Right, I'm going to pay an energy to do one more damage in an adjacent land. So I'm going to do one damage in land four, which is going to wipe out that town, which generates a fear. This comes off. And then I can do fire burns, water soothes. I generate a fear. I do two more damage. I'm going to wipe out that city. That generates two fear. So I have a remainder of one. This can all go away. There's nothing else that's injured on the board. I have one fear card. And we're literally one town away from a terror level two victory. <laughs> I kind of wish I had this open now, right? Buddy's back. Uh, look who is late to the stream. It's going to randomly trash the comment section. This guy. Oh, what's up, Daniel? How are you, man? <laughs> um, yeah. All right, well, that was interesting. So this is done. I'm going to reclaim two cards. And I'm not going to reclaim Gather the Scattered Light of Stars. I'm not going to need it, uh, I don't think. I just, man, I literally just need two damage as a fast action. And uh, we get a Terra Level 2 victory, which is nuts. With a huge assist from the chat. So I'm going to reclaim... I guess I'm going to reclaim all five of these. I have no, I have no Dahan I can even gather there, which is really bad. I can defend it though. Yeah, none of this is a fast power. Oh, 
Let's gain a power card. All right, so I'm gonna for I'm gonna gain reclaim five cards. I'm gonna forget Peace of the Nighttime Sky. I'm gonna take five of these cards, and I'll take everything but Nature's Resilience because that defense six seems a little silly right now. All right, done. They're not going to build there. So it's not going to generate any fear. I am many, many fear away from a Terra Level 3 victory. <laughs> this is really bad. We have one more Stage 2 card. We're really far away from the Slave Rebellion card, by the way. So there's going to be three turns from now before we get back to Slave Rebellion. So resetting my growth. The question is... How do I, I can defend four there. That's not a problem. Four cards, I'm just not gathering. Not gathering, but I'm gonna prevent the build in one. Oh, there's too many explorers. I mean, so you start feeling like you're playing against Russia half the time. I do think I go for that damage, that Damage at two, but the problem is I'm wondering if I really sh should rethink not reclaiming that card. That might be a mistake. Serious mistake. Do that. I like these three cards. I will take Promises of Protection, and I'm going to actually take Gather the Scattered Light of Stars. I think I play the same four cards again. I will gain, oh, do I gain a minor? Do I can get two, if, I mean, realistically, if I can get another card that allows me to move some Dahan, I get I get one Dahan in there with some defense, and I win in the Ravage. Um, so that makes some sense to me. So let me gain a power card. Um, I don't have the money for a major, so I can't even try. Can I, ooh. Do I have? Yes. Never mind. Steam vents for the win. <laughs> We're gonna move a presence. Who cares? Uh, what else am I gonna do? I'm going to add this. Get an energy. We're gonna get one energy for the presence track. Uh, so I'm, my second thing, I'm adding another presence. We'll make a sacred site there. Uh, we're going to do my third option, just gain another energy, and then we're going to play... No, we won't do that. We're going to get myself four card plays, move another presence, but I got steam vents, and then I have the two cards with the two moons, and my fourth card's going to be sunsets, whatever, that's fine. Uh, ultimately, we're going to do steam vents. I have three earth, I have one here, I have the two earth there. Oh, actually I actually have four earth, whatever, so that can destroy a town instead of an explorer and that town comes off terror level two victory and uh <laughs> ow my head hurts amoni hello oh this is high first um yeah what's up uh <laughs> thank you for the chat assist i uh clearly need to spend more time with starlight but uh chase phillips also says hello so we got a bunch of hellos uh it's a hello and goodbye <laughs> Um, hello and goodbye, I guess. But uh, goodbye to France. And uh, yes, yeah, Starlight's Starlight's got some things. This is I have never built Starlight this way. That is really nuts, and it was cool to happen live. And I and again, I appreciate the assist. I was like, I knew in my head, I'm like, I think I could defend four here and five here, and I just couldn't figure it out. And then you guys kind of making me go back um, made that really helpful. Uh, Steven says that was quick. Yeah, a little quick. Thank you, Eric. Good game. Uh, again, <laughs> I will take the assist from the chat. Hardcore with this guy. Um, it's a, sometimes I wonder if I make more mistakes on live playthroughs, and except when I'm when I'm just playing on my own. And I think I do, um, and I think my videos kind of bear that out because it's like there's just so much more going on, and I'm like trying to like you know keep it up. But that's not an excuse, and the chat's great. Um, I love that people are so engaged. Uh, with this game, sorry the growth option took a bit those first two rounds, but I think once I got into the rhythm and kind of knew what I was doing, um, it really worked. But very, very surprised I never needed the major. That war, uh, invaders from afar, like war touches the island shores. I mean, that card really, once we got 
take we took care of two and then I was like I think it was back to back ter- turns we had to defend six with three to Han or defend five with three to Han and just wiped out all those cities and then after that it was just you know you're playing this game of of uh you know again it feels like you're playing with Russia at some point because you're just using the sidereal guidance moving those explorers getting to a place where they're not building really love rate of land rejection in any game against France because that uh, that could really come up big but uh, that was a nice steam vents was a really nice card to get just to destroy that town not even worry about it um, again the other thing I was looking for is if I can get one to Han in there defended five we do a ravage we win at the end of the ravage step we still have this fear card here explore does not affect coastal lands um, you guys caught the one well I guess those it was just two more explorers so you, you caught the other mistake too when I I didn't have a source into land seven um, so it just really comes together I mean starlight I don't know where I put them on my rankings. I, I still don't feel like they're like top 10, but I know some people would swear that they're the best. Um, you know, I think there's definitely spirits moving up my rankings. And as I said, when I put that video out, like this, <laughs> these rankings could change in like six hours. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's not six hours, but <laughs> it's been like six weeks. Um, cool. Trackers and normal presence. So Otis, uh, yeah, Otis says he wants to become a patron sometime. I, I look, I appreciate the support. I know, it's tough times right now, and, and people have the their creators that they want to give to. If I'm ever that for you guys, great. If not, I just showing up and keeping the chat active and, and the comments and the likes, you know, are really really helpful for me as I continue to grow this thing. So that's cool. What is going on with the presence track? So many colors. Uh, yes, good question. So Mooney, what I what I've got is um, I use other pieces of presence, and I normally I've been doing this for a while. So if you go to my other videos. Um, you'll see. So this is a pick three spirit. So I use the blues to keep track of what growth options I picked. And I'm, I use the reds. When you're playing with Starlight, you close off things as you go. So I use the reds to indicate what growth options I don't have available to me uh, as the uh, the game goes on. So um, and it's just what I use. I would definitely recommend getting whatever components work for you to kind of try to make sense of this board and simplify it, simplify it as you go. Uh, it could be really, really helpful. Um, but that's it. But yeah, seriously, I mean, if I make that top 10 now, I mean, Bringer is going to move up. Shadows is going to move up. I think Lightning probably moves down. Uh, Keeper definitely needs to move up. River needs to move up big time. I got a lot of slack for, for, for freaking River really low. Um, I don't love River. I think they're a little bit on rails when you figure out the trick to it. But, you know, they're fun. It's fun to do a few times. That's for sure. That is for sure. Um, oh, so Otis was actually answer, answering Amuni. I appreciate it. I was like, trackers are normal presence. So yeah, uh, Amuni wanted to know why I had the colors and, and Otis kind of uh, with the assist in the answering the questions. But that is that. Uh, Mrs. Playthrough's already left me. So <laughs> I'm here by myself flying solo. That is, I guess I should be flying solo on solo playthroughs. Uh, so that's probably a sign though. I should wrap this sucker up. Uh, what do I got working on? Uh, I am going to be filming a keeper on the thematic board playthrough uh, i'll be doing that pretty soon i have a uh, scenario i'm going to do with wildfire i'm going to do that pretty soon i've had a request for a no event game so i, I will do that it's i'm going to use the the cards that come with jagged earth and how to actually at least animate the beasts a little bit in a no event game it's not all that exciting in a true solo game but i'm going to figure out how to do that i I haven't decided whether I should just do that with many minds or fangs, uh, but I have other things in mind for them as we go. Um, I am on the lookout for another two-player game. Uh, the Reddit community, the, their challenges the last couple didn't really kind of fit with with what I wanted to, like what spirits I want to feature. So I'm still kind of on the lookout for that, but I know people love it. Obviously, I still prefer True Solo, but it's a nice change of pace for me. And... Uh, you know, we'll be uh, good to go, man. I'll be getting two, three uh, Spirit Islands for a while. I mean, there's so much content in that game. I posted a picture today of a... I, oh, the next Spirit Island next out, coming out actually is going to be a, a Sky Double Board. Fracture Days with the Sky Double Board <laughs> playthrough, which is just bananas. <laughs> like, it's really, really nuts. Love it. Cool. Then Michael says he enjoys watching Spirit Island live whenever he can. I appreciate people showing up. It's funny, like my Spirit Island videos, my Maze Night lives. It's like you can tell. It's the energy is different. It's a really, uh, really nice, uh, nice crowd. Um, so uh, you know, we'll we'll be doing as many of those as we can. Uh, Otis, yeah, thanks. Cool, no problem. We are. Uh, oh yeah, no doubt. Um, happy to do it. I love doing it. Love that I can share it. Love that people care. Uh, I've yammered enough. 
So look, I really appreciate it. Uh, if you want to check my Patreon page out, just to see what's coming up, I put a calendar up at the beginning of every month that has a list of what's going down, what's coming down the pipe. Make sure you tune in for all the live playthroughs that you want to see. And other than that, until next time, happy gaming. Good job, baby.